third passage. You finish reading it. You turn to the guy sitting to your left and you say, I just read a passage about how Native American autobiographies are not at all like the Europeans thought they were. Right? I mean, that's what the whole thing exists to tell us, that they weren't based on the same set of assumptions about life and self. So, when we're asked what the main point is, it's to express that idea that Native American autobiographies were different from the way that Europeans conceived of them. And since that's exactly what answer choice D says, D is then our right answer for number 14. For number 15, the author's attitude toward the earlier scholarship, and you just go back to the passage and see what the author said about it. Line 6, earlier scholarship was limiting, it overlooked traditional modes. It failed to address. Oh, hey, look, answer choice say it failed to address. I mean, that's there in the passage, and it is one of the things that let us know how the author felt about those earlier attempts at scholarship, schmallership. 16, uh, what does that phrase mean? Well, again, you don't have to uncover what the free just go back to what the passage said about it in line two most scholars have focused on what as told to life histories they were solicited translated recorded and edited by non-native american collaborators that emerged from bicultural composite authorship so what is bicultural composite authorship these as told to life histories somebody tells it somebody else writes it down answer choice e for number 17, uh, how does the third paragraph function? Well, let's see, what does the third paragraph do? One can view as autobiographical the elaborate tattoos. One can also look at a robe in line 39. One could additionally even consider a teepee in line 42. What are we doing there? Giving examples of different kinds of you know, autobiographical information. Or C, providing examples. For number 18, why does the author of the passage refer to self-life and writing? Again, what does she say about it? Uh, start at line 11-ish. Prior to contact with non-indigenous cultures, did not share with Europeans the same assumptions about self-life and writing. So why do we mention it? to tell us that the native peoples did not agree with the European conception of those things. They had totally different assumptions upon which they based their thinking on those subjects. That's why we mention those subjects, to identify concepts about which they had contrasting ideas. Yeah, those were three things they didn't share assumptions about. And that leaves with just 19. So, what's consistent with the ideas of identity? Go back to the passage and see what the author said about identity in pre-contact tribes. Um, in line 16, identity was not merely individual, but also relational to a society, specific landscape, the cosmos. What would be in keeping with that? Oh, I don't know, something like B, a pictograph that contains the individual's identity, and also some piece of the cosmos, as the author said in the passage in line 16. And again, that's the nature of the right answer, and that's why B is right here. And that closes out the third passage. Alright, so in that video I showed you why all the right answers are right. I didn't show you how I read the passage. How I read the passage in such a way that I can anticipate most of the questions I'm going to be asked and the right answers to those questions. I didn't show you how I select which passage to do. I didn't give you a method of dealing with reading comp. That's because I think that's where the value's at. Now if you agree with me that having a methodological systematic means of kicking the else out where it counts is worth paying for, then check out that link and you can see a list of our current course offerings and prices. And if you don't, that's cool too. Keep making as best use you can of these free videos and tell all your friends how awesome we are. 
Although if you thought that was awesome, wait till you see what's in the paid courses.